Advanced Financial Accounting Excel Practice Problem. In this presentation, we're going to work a practice problem in Excel related to earnings per share with convertible securities. Get ready to account with Advanced Financial Accounting. Here we are in Excel. We have our information on the left-hand side. We're going to put that into the blue area on the right-hand side, calculating the basic earnings per share and the diluted earnings per share. Information left says earnings per share with convertible securities. That's what we will be doing here. P owns percentage of S common stock. The 80% is the ownership of the parent of the subsidiary. So P parent owns 80% common stock of S subsidiary. December 31st, 2000 X zero trial balances are to the right. Notice these are basically post closing trial balances. We don't have the income statement on them. Basically balance sheet accounts. Then we have S or subsidiary preferred stock. The percent being 8% convertible into common stock. So we have this convertible preferred stock on subsidiaries books, 8% and convertible into 13,000 shares. And then we have the S bonds, the subsidiary bonds have a rate of 10%. We can see the bonds on the books here. So on the right, we have the trial balances for the parent and the subsidiary bonds on the books, 200,000. We have the 10% rate and they too convertible into 8,000 shares of common stock. So <clears throat> we have to consider what that's going to look like, of course, with these options with regards to the, to the basic earnings per share and the diluted earnings per share. Okay, so S net income is in 2000 X zero, it's going to be 50,000. And the dividends S or subsidiary dividends are 30,800. Then we have the P's or the parents uh, preferred stock parents preferred stock which was just misspelled and we have now re-spelled it so we'll, we'll have a discussion with the editor here about that because uh, but in any case here it is we got the p's or parents preferred stock the percent's going to be the 11 percent and these are not convertible so they're not going to be convertible and then we have the bonds outstanding so the bonds to outstanding for p we have the percent 12 percent you can see the bonds on the books over here uh, for p at 280,000. So bonds for P, 12%, those also not convertible. Then P or parent companies uh, after tax income, excluding investment income from S, the subsidiary is 110,000. And then P's dividends are 68,000. And companies file separate tax returns. The tax rate we're going to say is 40%. We want to calculate the basic and diluted earnings per share for the consolidated entity all right so let's go up top let's start with the basic uh, earnings per share we'll start off there and then we'll go to the more complex dilution or diluted earnings per share we're going to start with the income from uh, operations for p so p's income from operations is going to be given in the data at the 110,000, 110,000, and then we're going to break out the S net income. So let's go to the S net income. Then I'm going to pull that on the inside where we'll do some more calculations with regards to it. So I'm going to say this is going to be equal to the 50,000 given in the data. Then we have the preferred dividends that we want to take into consideration the preferred dividends because they're obviously going to be paid first. So the preferred dividends for S, if we look over on the on the trial balance over here, are the 90,000. So we got the 90,000, and then we have uh, 8%. So what I'm going to do is I'll keep it as a negative. So I'm just going to say this equals that 90,000, 90,000, times the 8%, times the 8%, we get the 7,200. Then that's going to give us the earnings uh, available. So earnings available. I'm going to sum those up, which will be a subtraction problem. So it's going to be the 50,000 minus the 7,200 or the 42,800. Then we want to take a look at S or the subsidiaries shares that are outstanding. Outstanding shares. We can see here for S that they have on the books 100,000. And this is an indication here that the par value for P is 10 and s5 therefore 100,000 divided by 5 will give us the shares outstanding let's take a look at that i'm going to say negative here to flip the sign because this is a negative number and i want to make it a positive so i'm just taking that number and then dividing it by uh the five and i'm pulling that five from right here five divided by five and there's going to be the twenty thousand. so then we're going to get the earnings per share for s the eps for s the eps for the subsidiary which is going to be equal to 
the 42,008 divided by the 20,000 shares outstanding. That's going to be $2.14. Then we got, we're going to multiply that times the shares that are held by P because we want to consider, you know, what's P, you know, P's relation to this. So we're going to be saying, all right, shares held by P, uh, we, we have then of the 20,000 shares that we just calculated at the 100 divided by five, P owns 80% of them. So we'll do that calculation. It's going to be the 20,000 times the 80%. So P then owns 16,000 shares. So we have 16,000 shares. Then we have got the contribution uh, to the P earnings then. If we have 16,000 shares and the earnings per share are 214, we're going to be taking the 214 times the 16,000 shares that are allocated to P we have then the 34,240. Then we're going to be taking the total earnings, total earnings, we're going to call it total earnings of P then, is going to be the 110 and the 34,240. So we'll just sum that up or you can add them up. I'll just sum this whole column with a bunch of blank cells in it, but those two numbers added up will give us the 144,240. Then we want to be considering the preferred stock dividends of P because P is going to have to be paying their preferred stockholders first. And we had P down here had the preferred stock, uh, you'll recall, at the 12%. So 12%. So P's got on the books. P's books has the preferred stock 200,000, 12%. So I'm going to say equals because I'm going to keep the negative here of that 200,000 times the preferred stock for P uh, is not the 12%, it's the 11%. The bonds are the 12%, sorry about that. We're picking up the 11%. So the 200,000 times the 11% and it's gonna give us the 22,000. Then we got the earnings per share. So the earnings, uh, earnings to P common shareholders then is gonna be equal to, I'm gonna say the sum, which is gonna be a subtraction problem, the 144, uh, 240 minus the preferred shareholders who get paid first. So we're left with 122, 240, uh, 240, which will then be allocated to the common shareholders. So that now we could take that amount and say, well, how many P shareholders or parent, or parent company shareholders are there? And we're going to say same kind of thing over here that we did for S. We could see that it's on the books at uh, common stock 150,000 and par value 10. So I'm going to take the 150 divided by 10 this time. So I'm going to say, all right, this is going to be equal to, I'll say negative to make it a pot, to flip the sign to a positive number. This divided by 10. Par value means 15,000 shares are outstanding. Outstanding shares. So then we're going to get our basic then, basic uh, earnings per share. EPS that's going to be the 122 240 divided by the 15,000 and we got the 815 uh, 815 okay so now let's do the diluted earnings per share which is a, a little bit more complex because we have to we're going to take into consideration what if these conversions happened right and then because then there's going to be a difference in the shares and whatnot so we'll, this will be a bit more complex to to consider the what ifs here so we'll say all right we'll start at the same point P uh, income from the operations, P income from the operations is going to be given at that 110. So that's the basically net income. Then we're picking up the S's net income. So S's net income, same thing. I'm going to pull that into the inner column here or the one inner column, one, one step in, one column in. That's going to be the 50,000. Okay, then we're going to assume a conversion of the bond and we want to consider the effect with regards to interest. So in other words, we have the bonds here for S. This is this is the subsidiary's bonds. We could see them on the books here at the 200,000. They have a rate of 10% and they could be converted into 8,000 shares. So if they were converted to 8,000 shares, then we wouldn't be paying the interest on, on the bonds, right? They would, wouldn't be, so we have to take into consider the, the effect of the interest and the tax impact implications that would be on that as well so let's do a little calculation on on that i'll break this out and calculate this we're going to say all right well the bonds then were on the books for the two hundred thousand, and then we've got the rate of the bonds let's multiply that times the bond rate which we said was equal to or the the problem says 
that it's equal to 10% for the bond rate. And let's actually bring this in another, another column. So I'm going to actually delete these two. I'm going to bring them in another column. So I'm going to say, let's bring them in here. And I'm going to say, let's say uh, negative of that 200,000. And then I'll bring the rate here, which is going to be the bond rate of that 10%. So the 10%. That's going to give us the interest, right? That'll give us the interest on the year. So I'll say interest is going to be equal to that 200,000 times the 10. That's going to be the 20,000. We'll then multiply that times the tax rate to figure out the tax effect out on it, the tax impact. Tax rate being the 40%. And so that's going to give us the tax. So I'll just say tax. And so we're going to take then that 20,000 times the 40%. That'll give us the tax, and then we'll take a look at the, the uh, interest is going to be net of the taxes then, which I'm going to pull out into the outer column now. So we had the interest, which would be going out of the 20000 but it would actually have a beneficial tax effect in that it would, it would cause taxes to go down. It would make us look worse, right, <laughs> which is good for taxes. And so we would say, all right, then we'd have the 20000 minus the tax advantage we would have if we had the 20000 so we have a net effect of the uh, 12,000. So then we have the earnings available. So let's calculate the earnings available, which then will be uh, summing these two up. So we'll just add these two up over here. I'm gonna equal the sum of the 50,000 and the 12,000, just adding those, those two there, and that's gonna give us the 62,000. Then we've got the shares outstanding, shares outstanding uh, for S. And so considering the shares outstanding for S, we've got the 100,000 uh, shares divided by the par value of 5. So I'm going to do that same calculation we've seen in the past. I'm going to pull this into the inside once again. I'm going to say negative of that 100,000 to flip the sign to a positive divided by, divided by 5. And that'll give us our 20,000. Then we're going to say, well, what if we assume there's a conversion of the bonds. So we assume a conversion of the bonds. And that means that th the S uh, bonds could be converted. So the 200,000 bonds of, could be converted into 8,000 shares. So if they did that conversion, then you'd, you'd say, okay, well, now we've got another 8,000 shares that we would be dealing with. And then if we assume there's a conversion of the preferred stock, because they could do the same thing on the preferred stock. So now we're saying, here's the preferred stock that they had on the books, 90,000, 8%. They could convert it if to, bond, to, to, to the stock, to common stock, and that would be 13,000. That would mean there'd be another 13,000 if they were to do that. So we'd say, now there's another 13,000 on the common stock. So then the total shares then that would be out there at this point in time would then be the sum of the 20, the 8, and the 13, which I'm going to pull into this middle column, equals the sum of the 20, the 8, the 13, giving us the 41,000. So now we'll calculate the earnings per share for S then. Earnings per share for S is going to be the earnings, and we got the earnings here and the S uh, shares. So what we're going to say the 62,000 divided by S's share uh, 41, and that's going to give us the 151. Uh, then we want to know the shares that are held by P. So we're going to be picking up the shares that are held by P, and P has 80%. There's, there's 20,000 shares currently out there, and P has 80% of them. So I'm going to be picking up then if we go back over here, well, I'm going to say this is going to be equal to the 20,000 times the 80%. The 80% up top, that's going to give us our 16,000 shares. So the contribution to P's earnings then, if we say P's earnings, is going to be the 151 times the number of shares. So the 151 per share times P's shares, which are 16,000, that's going to give us the 24. 195. So total earnings then, total earnings of P, we're going to then sum up the outer column, which is going to be the 110 and the 24, 195. I'm going to do that with the sum, even though there's going to be a lot of blank cells here. So those two numbers are going to be the 134, 195. And then they got the preferred dividends of P, which once again, we're going to be pulling out just like we did up top, because they'll be paid first. 
So for that, we're going to take the preferred stock, the 200,000 on the trial balance up here, and the preferred stock percent is the 11%. So I'm going to be down here. I'm going to say this is going to be equal then to that 200,000 multiplying by that uh, 11%, the 11%. That's going to give us the 22,000. So then we have the earnings 2P common shareholders then are going to be, we're going to say the sum of those two. We're going to say this equals then, which will be a subtraction, the 134, 195 minus the 22. I'm, I'm summing them, which will subtract them, which is the 112, uh, 195. And then we've got the P shares outstanding. So how many shares are outstanding for P? We're going to do our calculation as we did before. Here's P's common stock. And we're going to divide it by the top, the par value, which is five dollars. So we're going to say, I'm going to make, I'm going to flip the sign by saying negative of that 150, dividing it, dividing it by five. Then, uh, hold on a second, hold on, it should be divided by ten. Sorry about that. This equals the 150. The five is for is for s. We're dividing by ten, divided by ten, and that's going to be the fifteen thousand. So that's going to give us the diluted earnings per share so diluted earnings per share then is going to be equal to the 112 195 divided by that 15,000 that gives us the seven dollars and 48 cents